If you guys have ever seen a race at Williams Grove Speedway, then you've gotta notice the tight corners, long straightaways, and, well, pretty much a paperclip. Now make that 3 eighths of a mile, and you get this. As I like to call it, the Martinsville of dirt tracks. Heartland Motorsports Park is a multi-track racetrack in Topeka, Kansas that features multiple forms of racing and also hosts festivals and many other events, with its most popular events being the multiple drag races and road course races there every year. But with it being around for almost 34 years, it has definitely had its fair share of memorable moments. But through the years 1999 and 2000, this racetrack would make a huge impact to dirt track racing. The year is 1999, founder of the Outlaws Ted Johnson had just signed an equity partnership with TNN, which would provide coverage of the races both live and tape delayed. Now at the time multiple dirt tracks were starting to get built, such as Texas Motor Speedway and Charlotte. Around this time Heartland Park Topeka, which was the park's name at the time, had announced that they were building a temporary dirt track, which would host many types of races but would have a two day finale with the World of Outlaws. The track was built right on top of the drag strip, with the strip being visible on the infield. Barely any banking, 67 to 68 foot wide corners, the track was just something else. The Outlaws planned on racing there from the 18th and 19th of June 1999. When the Outlaws hit the track, many drivers were racing like they were in non-wings, and would give full throttle on the corners with many drivers popping wheelies down the straightaways. Now of course the drivers were not too fond of this track, and this opinion would spread through the pits. Ted Johnson had allegedly even threatened a $5,000 fine to any driver that would mention anything negative about the track in interviews. Now you see, this was not just any ordinary race. Many racing facilities were showing interest in building both permanent and temporary dirt tracks, and Ted knew that this race could influence more facilities to build more tracks, and needed to make it as impressive as possible. The first night of racing would get postponed due to bad weather, so the event was moved to Saturday and Sunday. Saturday's event would draw a massive crowd of 18,000 spectators, filling both grandstands, way more than what the track's promoters were anticipating. Now out of all the hatred for this track from many drivers, one driver in particular that night had already perfected the track, and his name is Andy Hillenberg. After having a tough heat race earlier that day, falling victim to a broken brake line, Hillenberg would start in the back of the pack for the A main feature, and would get through the pack like a knife through butter, ultimately winning Saturday's feature. Another driver that would succeed with the track as well was Johnny Herrera, with both him and Andy having some good battles throughout the two nights, with Johnny winning the following night's feature. The race was an absolute success, and they would decide to bring back the track the following year, and again would host the World of Outlaws. But instead of the 67 to 68 foot wide corners, they would be changed to 80 to 85 feet wide, making it a little bit more easier for the drivers. And instead of a two day event, they would be changed to three days, adding in a point system where the top four in points would automatically make it into Saturday's feature. Sammy Swindell would find lots of success the first night, winning Thursday's feature. And of course, Andy Hillenberg would find victory the following day. On the final night of this event, drivers Craig Delansky, Andy Hillenberg, Steve Kinzer, and Sammy Swindell would be top four in points, guaranteeing a spot for them in the feature. Now something I find interesting about this night in particular is what happened to Sammy Swindell in the second dash. On the start, Sammy would get into the right side of Steve Kinzer, which would make Sammy go back in the pits to repair. But luckily Steve was able to get back on the track before the restart, but Sammy would not make it out on time. During the first couple laps, you could see Sammy in the back of turn 2, getting ready to get pushed off. And on lap 3, Sammy would get pushed off onto the track. And yes, on green flag conditions. Really sticky getting into the corners. Uh, and one up along the walls, that Sammy trying to roll out there. Yeah. Sammy's trying to roll out onto the track. Gets, maybe get a few practice laps in, Brad. Well, he's, he's going to set up. I don't really know. Uh, that's and the yellow's, the yellow's out because there's a push truck out as well. Boy, this is going to be a little controversial. They, they pushed Sammy out under green flag uh, conditions and caused the yellow. Now, of course, the track officials were not too happy with this, and Sammy would get black flagged, which would make him star eighth in the feature. Now, when the main event started, there was not one, not two, not three, but four f***ing cautions before they could even complete a first lap. After this, Andy Hillenberg would lead all 30 laps, claiming the final victory of this track's history. After posting my idea of this video, I've realized how much people actually love this track, and I can completely see why. You see, like most things in this world, communities like when they are given something unique, something interesting that they have never seen before. And that was this track. The idea of drivers fighting for every spot they can get, popping willies on the corners, tensions rising, caution flags flying out every couple minutes, the track was just full of action, similar to Bowman Gray Stadium for asphalt fans. 
The success of these events would be the first of many, and following the success of the 99 event, Bristol would start covering the track in dirt the year after, which is now arguably the most popular temporary dirt track on the planet. After 2000, Heartland Park would start constructing a permanent 3 8 dirt track that sits right behind the drag strips grandstands. And no, it doesn't look anything like the temporary track. The Outlaws would still have races there occasionally, but as time has went on, they have slowly stopped taking trips there. And to be honest, I haven't heard any news on the track ever since 2020, with their last race being in 2019 and the two 2020 races being cancelled. Heartland Park's temporary track sits in the hearts of many for truly being one of a kind, and we were lucky to have such an event for the World of Outlaws. And it's possible that without this event, Bristol would have never went to dirt. So essentially this track has changed the course of dirt track racing for good. And maybe someday, we'll see something similar, but that's for time to decide. Thank you guys for watching, this is Sprint Car Nation, and I'll see you guys next time.